Hi, I'm Ksenia. I'm your Astro Weather Girl here with this week's Astro Weather for us all. Welcome to all the people who are new to my channel and the people who are new to astrology. I hope that you can learn more of this wonderful ancient science as we explore the heavens together this week. Also, thank you to all my old friends. It is lovely to have you with me as always. You're so welcome here. Uh, I also want to extend a big kiss to my patrons as well, my bronze, silver and gold patrons. It's glorious to have you with me. Also guys uh, who are my patrons, um, there is a, a special video coming out for you on the nodal return and nodal inversion and what this means. That's coming out for you next week. Um, it's part of a two-part video series that I've produced on this particular very exciting and interesting topic. So check in to Patreon for that. Well first things first, before we get stuck into the weather, I cannot believe what is happening in Australia at the moment. Barely a week after I've done my interview with amazing intuitive astrologer Paula Shaw, all about the astrology of Australia. It was like, you know, I saw all these news articles that really reflected everything that Paula and I talked about in last Sunday's video. You can check that out um, by going to my YouTube page and um, having a look there at the interview that I had with her where we talked about what was coming up in the future of Australia. And it's, it's happening already and it's really quite exciting to see. While you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and this video. Uh, it's lovely to have your uh, participation as a part of this beautiful community we have of people who are really interested in astrology and expanding their knowledge and expanding their understanding of self through this beautiful mechanism of ancient knowledge. Now, speaking of ancient knowledge, I just want to establish that, yes, these are birthing times um, and we've talked a lot about that in recent videos, but there is nothing to fear. I was talking with my shaman who works on my website and I might just add she's running some specials at the moment and she mentioned that the Peruvian shamans who she studies with have a prophecy and it's available to everyone on the internet. I'm not sharing some sort of secret knowledge here. Um, I'll put a link in the description below actually to this particular prophecy. Um, and it's a 500 year old prophecy. 500 years ago, when the Spanish started to invade the um, Southern American continent looking for gold, the shamans of the time, particularly this, this school that she studies through in, uh, in um, Peru, they realized what was happening. They saw what was happening and the potential to lose ancient sacred knowledge. And so many of the shamans in the, the um, Incan medical school that she studies with, they, they left their societies and went up into the Andes Mountains. And there they kind of hid away and remained for 500 years, having societies high in the mountains, practicing their shamanic ways and their um, tribal customs. At the time, they had a prophecy 500 years ago that in 500 years, things would be ripe for them to return back down to mainstream society. And that's exactly what's happening. The shamans who have, uh, not the same shamans obviously, but the descendants of these shamans who retreated away from the persecution and the trauma and the, um, the killing and decimation of culture, they retreated away up into the Andes. Now they're coming back and this is in fulfillment of a prophecy because these shamanic peoples have seen that the time is ripe. They've looked for the indicators spoken about in the prophecies and this prophecy is available to read online through the link below. They've seen the prophecies and they, uh, the, sorry, they've seen the signs that the prophecy is is coming true that the ripening time is here and so they've returned with their ancient knowledge and their ancient wisdom now tessa my shaman uh, working with me at guiding star is practicing a lot of their uh, ways and techniques she studies with them she honors their traditions um, so she, you know if you want to know firsthand more about these kinds of practices then do uh, check in with tessa but this prophecy is of great encouragement i find to us all right now as we go through these times of birthing into something new firstly this is a signal that, that it, these are exciting times, that, that we're in times of change and birthing into a new way of being where shamanic practices, and I would also add, and I'll give you the reason why in just a minute, ancient 
um, or not ancient, yeah, well, ancient Celtic knowledge or pagan um, ideas and understandings, herbalism, what people would term as witchcraft, practicing of astrology, all these things are getting their day, are coming back now. We're seeing them grow in popularity on the earth. We're seeing them be uh, more accepted now and not persecuted by the church. And I will also just uh, on that point add in that around 500 years ago at the time when the Incan shamans were being persecuted and they retreated up into the Andes, at that time we also had the movement of Heinrich Kramer, uh, a man I don't have a lot of respect for, <laughs> who established the witch trials of Europe that uh, purportedly killed, well there's many different variations on how many people were killed under these witch trials, but some estimate 9 million which is a tremendous amount of people and quite horrific when you think about that. That was occurring at the same time. Suddenly it was decided through Heinrich Kramer's sick mind and belief that women were you know, evil and, and overly sexualized and they needed to be um, you know, kept in line and what have you, uh, that this guy, because he was like this with the Pope, decided he was going to be able to uh, change how... Um, witchcraft was perceived in in the world and and up until that point the the Celtic traditions the pagan traditions the um, the traditional feminine energy had been accepted and part of society alongside the church but it was under the movement of Heinrich Kramer and maybe there's some there was some energy sort of brewing before that as well that uh, things really began to shift and we saw this dreadful inquisition that decimated families and lives and or, or, and you know um, accusations that were purely false and based on um, sick sexual motives and what have you I mean you just need to go to any uh, castle that shows torture devices in Europe um, uh, to know what kind of sick depraved uh, activities went on and this was happening 500 years ago too. Now I'm preparing a lot of research hopefully to do a video in the future about this topic this 500 year cycle that we've been in astrologically but it's very exciting to me to see the rising up of people who are interested in astrology and herbalism and naturopathy and holistic healing, shamanic practices and so on because we are at the ripening stage of this 500 year cycle. It's entirely possible that there's a karmic rebirthing of the people who were persecuted back then and in, uh, and in an enabling, if you like, of them to practice and um, karmically reap the fruit of uh, you know their, their suffering now with the great reward. So I find this a very exciting time to be in and keep tuned. The reason I'm mentioning this is because I want just to sort of lay the groundwork so people know that I'm in preparation for a, a video that looks at this karmic ripening that's occurring in shamanic what we would call eighth house fields that's happening on the earth right now. And because of that, have hope, be encouraged because this is a great time of awakening and, and karmic ripening for these kinds of practices. So if you are someone into shamanism, into sort of witchcraft, if you like, or indigenous practices, the things that have been maligned, persecuted, um, you know, really suffering under the Kali Yuga period that we're coming out of, just know the awakening is upon us and this is a very exciting time. Old 500 year hierarchies are about to crumble and are falling. So we have a lot to celebrate. But now on with the astro weather, which you've all been waiting for. I want to point out that at the moment uh, we have two or well, for the week ahead, we have two rather significant events occurring in the sky that I want to talk about. And then I'm going to break it down or break down one of these events for each sign. The first thing is that on the 23rd of September here in Australia, um, depending where you are in the world, it might be occurring for you on the 22nd of December, uh, September, not December. Um, but we have the sun moving into the sign of Libra. Now this is going to be a very important transit through Libra. The sun moves through Libra every year. This is nothing new. However, this year it is going to be important because we are having, uh, especially as the sun reaches the latter degrees of Libra um, towards the end of this 30-day period, the sun will be making a square aspect 
a 90 degree aspect to this outer planet stellium hanging out up here in Capricorn and I spoke about the influence of outer planet stelliums in my video with Crassy, beautiful amazing sidereal astrologer Crassy Atasio. We did a collaboration together looking at the astrology of the next six months. If you haven't seen that video please check it out. It is applicable to everyone and we go into great detail about why 2020 has been the way it has and what we can expect. Um, but towards the end of this 30 day period of the sun being in Libra, we're going to get the square aspect to this outer planet stellium, a very, very important um, transit. So we're building to that now. We're preparing for that now as the sun moves into Libra on the 23rd. We're going to notice a shift in the energy that's out there in the world um, under this change in influence from sun in Virgo to sun in Libra. What is it going to mean? Well, the sun in Libra is all about partnerships and collaboration because that, that's what Libra is all about. Partnerships, collaboration, working with others, doing things together. Now the sun is not in very good dignity in the sign of Libra because the sun is very autonomous. It wants to do things itself. It's the king. There's only one sun, not, you know, sharing and collaborating. It is the sun. It's not in a well, it actually is in a binary system with Sirius, but um, for the purposes of our solar system and where we are born um, as humans on Earth, um, we oscillate around one sun. It's an autonomous planet. It has autonomous energy. And so in the sign of collaboration with other people, it doesn't do so well. And this is why the sun in many astrological circles is considered to be debilitated in the sign of Libra because their energies are almost polarically opposite. One wants to look after the self and the other is all about let's do this together. Win-win situations, you know. So when the sun moves into Libra, we can feel a lot of pressure to compromise and to sort of maybe give way a little bit to others. And that can be a healthy thing. Don't think that that's wrong. Sometimes if we've been pushing our own will onto someone else, um, we might need to step back a bit and be a bit more considerate and look at win-win situations. And think about how this might be manifesting in world governments and world situations right now. Maybe there is a need for more compromise. Maybe there is a need for collaboration rather than, you know, um, not that the sun is authoritarian, but that kind of a, you know, uh, autonomous approach. You will do what I say kind of thing. Maybe this could be very, very helpful because there will be this pressure to compromise. Now, I do want to point out that in your personal life, there might be some pressure to compromise that comes along right now too. Um, but just know that your willpower can be compromised when this, the sun moves through by transit through Libra as well. So, you know, you're usually you might be very good at asserting yourself, at standing in your own confidence. And just know something might occur during the next month of this transit of the sun through Libra where that comes under pressure. Um, you know, your willpower might need to sort of give way a little bit in some area. But the sun is confidence and it represents confidence and wherever it is in your natal chart is where you will shine, where you can get your confidence from. So during this particular next three month transit of the sun through Libra, we might be getting our confidence from our ability to negotiate, from our ability to create win-win situations. Yes, our willpower might be sort of a bit impeached, if you like, or a bit subdued for the sake of working collaboratively with others, but we can get um, feel confident perhaps that in our personal lives, we're going to be able to create solutions in a more um, equitable way. We might have more confidence for negotiating a deal with somebody or coming to a, a conclusion. Maybe if you're working through some sort of divorce settlement, you might, under this influence, you might be able to reach a, a definitive conclusion where, you know, it's, it's more win-win and you can be confident um, in that win-win outcome that, oh, finally, I'm getting what is fair and just here. Um, it might mean that you are more confident with design, with uh, you know, creation of a, an aesthetic environment, you know, a sun in Libra. Libra is is um, about anything sophisticated and aesthetically appealing. And the sun is uh, about creativity. So like, let's use an example. Maybe you, you've been trying to work out a garden design um, to make your home look its best. Under this energy, you can be confident that you will reach a solution that is aesthetically pleasing and highly creative 
incorporating both these energies in fact Libra is a very creative sign as well so your creativity can be a source of confidence your ability to aesthetically design something can be a source of confidence your ability to be involved perhaps in some kind of um, beauty or art or culture can be a source of confidence for you now as well be confident in your creative abilities not only that but the sun represents the center of something obviously it's the center of the solar system and the same you know a hermetic principle as above so below applies to the astrology chart the sun represents the center of something and so um, being in Libra you might find that this is the a great month to be at the center of some cultural activity some artistic endeavor some beauty you know uh, refinement that might manifest in your life so you know you you might be an artist and you might get the chance to put on in some sort of art exhibition and you are the center of a cultural experience that people are having or you might find and of course it all depends where this is falling in your chart how that will manifest um, but you might find that your beauty is the center of some discussion that's occurring in a in your social group you know oh wow look I just love what you've done with your hair it's amazing it looks so beautiful who did you see how did you where did you get that idea and uh, you know who did that cut for you and your self-expression of beauty might be the center of some kind of attention in some way for you this month because Libra is all about um, other people it might be through other people that you are seeking to define yourself now uh, that could look like maybe a business collaboration that comes your way you know maybe you've been working on promoting something a new business idea or maybe you've been working on um, developing some new product or something where you are the face of the brand and it's through a collaboration that you might be able to develop some sort of um, definition of that brand or some sort of uh, promotion of what you're doing. So it might be that you collab collaborate with an advertiser. It might be you collaborate with a marketer. It might be that you collaborate uh, with, with any type of person that can help you define yourself under this energy. You might also require the input of someone else to define yourself in terms of beauty because Libra is ruled by the planet of beauty Venus so you know you might need some input from a, a makeover person or a, um, a hairdresser or a, a, a what do they call them when they an, an image consultant um, and you know you might need the help of somebody else to help you define your your presence your image or even your sense of um, confidence and, and presentation to the world through the Sun being in Libra so keep an eye out while the Sun is in Libra for new partnerships that might manifest now that can help you to shine um, this is a great time for uh, finding new ways to shine in the world through connections through partnerships now although Mars is retrograde um, under this influence and it's not actually a good time to initiate some kinds of uh, new venture that you haven't thought about before it is actually a time when you under this energy of the Sun in Libra when you can sort of suss out a few partnerships and then when Mars goes direct right okay let's go and you know take action on this it's a time for looking the sun is to look the sun is to see um, it's time for looking for partnerships that might help you define yourself or your presentation or increase your confidence in the world that we can then take action with once Mars goes direct in November so do the looking find those partnerships that are going to help you and then you can really make it manifest a little later this year interestingly on the more mundane level and, and mundane for those who um, aren't familiar mundane astrology is to do with world events big scale events for the collective not so much personal astrology I'm a personal astrologer but I am also interested in how astrology affects the mundane experiences we have in the world and on the mundane level the Sun in Libra is about justice and so we might find that the collective is looking for justice right now for fairness for harmony for balance maybe there will be opportunities in the coming 30-day cycle of the Sun through Libra when we get to balance things that are unjust and out of balance in the world which I find very exciting and I think we're going to notice that more so when the Sun reaches the latter degrees of Libra and makes that square aspect to the outer planet stellium of Saturn Pluto and, ne and uh, Jupiter 
that's going to be exciting. So the building time is happening now as we're building towards a need for justice, a need for fairness, a need for equality, a need for harmony. And we'll be looking to enact that under the square. I might point out, and I'll probably talk more about this when we get to it, that the square aspect is not going to be easy. <laughs> the square aspect might mean we look for justice or we're finding sort of harmony and balance in ways that are filled with a bit of struggle um, and a bit of difficulty because the square aspect has the nature of Saturn. They can feel like we're blocked from achieving justice and fairness and equality. We are restricted because that's the nature of Saturn or there's obstacles in the way. But we are required, as is the nature of, the, of Saturn, when there is a square aspect, to persevere, to endure, to keep putting one foot in front of the other and take our time and be steady and meticulous about how we deal with these things. I'll talk more about that in a couple of weeks, but we are getting ready for um, this sun square to the outer planet stellium now beginning this week. At the same time as we have the sun squaring the outer planet stellium, I want to also point out that we're going to be having a sun opposition to Mars. And we're building to this. This is going to happen in around 20 days time, roughly, depending on when you're watching this video, of course. Um, but from when the sun moves into Libra on the 23rd of September, give it about 20 days from then, we're going to start to see this enacted and that opposition to Mars enacted. It's not going to be easy. We're building to this now, but as I said in the intro to this video, don't be afraid. This is a special time. Prophetic fulfillment is occurring. So we need to go through this, what many would consider a final push in the birthing of this new baby. I want to just encourage you because of this to persevere. Whatever's going on in your life, whatever you're experiencing, wherever things are at, don't give up. Persevere. For me, I've been working very hard on my business and I love it. It gives me so much joy and delight and pleasure to bring astrology to people. It, it's an absolute thrill. Plus the wellness component of my business as well that I really am a great believer in and so thankful for the opportunity to do. Some days though, and people who tune in to my daily oracle card will know there are some days when I'm feeling a little bit under the energetic influence of the time, heavy, weighted down. But I'm keeping reminding myself, don't give up, Ksenia. Don't stop doing what you feel is your purpose and your mission. Even though the energy is weighty, the energy is heavy, there's a lot of fear out there in the world now, we must keep going. And the same goes for you. You must keep going. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep believing in your dreams. Keep believing in your purpose, in your mission, what you're here to fulfill, what your soul is drawn to. Keep going with it because we are called under this energy that's building now. We're called to persevere. We're called to endure. Don't get distracted. Don't lose your purpose right now. Keep going. Saturn energy is a marathon run. It's not a sprint, it requires endurance. Now, when I think back to my childhood when I used to run in marathons <laughs> at school, um, it wasn't easy and I'd probably walk a bit, run a bit, walk a bit, run a bit. And that's okay, you've just gotta to get to the finish line. So don't think you're gonna sprint there, just keep steadily going one foot after another and run this marathon right through to the end. And I mentioned the Saturn influence of endurance because the nature of a square, remember, is Saturn. Um, and obviously Saturn is a big key player in what is playing out through this T-square that's coming up. So that's the first thing that we are seeing happen that I need to mention. The, the second thing that's occurring um, is that there's going to be a Mercury-Mars opposition. So here is... Yes, I've got that right. Good. I was just <laughs> just making sure that I had the right placements for my planets. But we've got Mars here opposing Mercury. That's occurring exact on the 24th of September. So the day after the sun moves into Libra, we've got an opposition from Mars to Mercury occurring. And this could be quite tension filled. Let's explore it. Well, what is Mars? Mars is the fighter, the warrior, the hero. 
and it takes action. It doesn't it doesn't hang around. It doesn't dilly dally. It just jumps straight in without thinking a lot of the time. And what is Mercury? Well, Mercury is thinking. Mercury is speaking. Mercury is writing. Mercury is communicating. And so we might find that we have uh, a lot going on in terms of rebellious. I'll just get that straight. Rebellious thinking at this time. You know, um, aggressive thinking, aggressive speech, aggressive communication, rebellious speech, rebellious communication, where we're like, screw you, and and I'm not going to participate in that, and um, no way, they can't do that to me. Those kinds of uh, very sort of fighty <laughs> words, fighty thoughts, fighty um, communications that we are going to be experiencing on an internal level, possibly as a collective as well, under this influence too. So it can be brilliant, this energy for speaking your mind. You know, if you've been hesitant about saying what you really think <sighs> under this energy, no more hesitation, no more blockages. You're going to be like, no, Facebook post this ugh, and put it out there. Or, you know, shouting on the street corners, you can't do this or whatever. It's great when we need to speak our mind and share our opinion. This energy can be great for that, but it's not good. For creating peace it's not good because we tend to use our words mercury as weapons mars so you can expect to see somewhere in the world on the news reports or in your community or even in your personal life people using words as weapons on this day in fact you might suddenly find oh my god where's this coming from uh you're using words as weapons you know attacking people with your words and your verbal dialogue don't beat yourself up if you find yourself doing that. That's quite okay. You're responding to the energy of the time. But when we act with consciousness and awareness, we say something, we're like, oh, grief, that was, that was a bit much. We detach. We look at ourselves. We can see, oh, where did that come from? Oh, Mercury, Mars. Okay, I know. I know. And, and we realize that it's coming from the energies. We're energy receptors. We're vessels. We're instruments that the divine energy of the universe plays through. Some people will be more triggered than others, especially if they've got personal planets around these uh, latter degrees of Aries or Libra. I've got my moon in the latter degrees of Aries and Libra. So look out if you're in close proximity to me on this day, you might cop an earful. <laughs> but even if you do, you will know that it's coming from, okay, Aries, Aries, Mar not Aries, Mars, um, Mercury opposition that's occurring in and around this day. And when I say this day, it's the 24th in Australia, it could be, depending where you are in the world, it might be a little earlier. Australia kind of comes first. We get there, like our dates are always first. It happens at the same time for everybody. But, but um, for us in Australia, we are a day ahead uh, of the rest of the world date-wise. So 24th in Australia, depending where you are in the world, it might be on the 23rd. So what can we expect? Verbal battles, arguments, and bullheaded thinking because uh, Mercury is the way we think and with an uh, energy impact from Mars we're going to be thinking aggressively we're going to be thinking stubbornly we're going to be thinking like my way or the highway bucko don't try and cross the line with me you know that's how we're going to be thinking this bullheaded determined um, sort of you know if you want to use the, the idea of warrior thinking you can um, although an opposition is a much more difficult aspect than the 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 good aspects to Mars, which would be the heroic thinking, the courageous thinking, the warrior thinking. With an opposition, we're looking at the more bullheaded, um, stubborn, uh, determined kind of thinking. Now, we may also find under this energy that we have a bit of a tendency to fault find with other people, you know, where we're, we're looking at other people and judging them and thinking, you can't say that. How dare you, you know, or we have this judgy attitude um, to others. Uh, fault finding, lack of forgiveness is also present. So I don't know about you, but because this is triggering uh, or around the vicinity of my moon, I might just go and spend the day reading a book in bed <laughs> and not go out and interact with anybody. Um, because there's a, there's a tendency to be harsh here, to judge others, to not forgive when people cut you off in traffic or push in the queue for your morning coffee or something 
If you're familiar with the old biblical adage to, you know, take the log out of someone else's eye, sorry, how does it go? Um, We're so busy taking the speck out of someone else's eye that we fail to see the log in our own eye. Um, The old biblical analogy there, that's this energy where we're so busy fault finding and picking, nitpicking other people and getting angry and lacking forgiveness with other people that we don't see how we ourselves are being obnoxious or are being difficult or are being pushy or whatever we fail to see our own behavior in that regard under this energy so (laughs) good day for running and hiding if you're a pisces oriented person like myself so as you can tell by that biblical reference that i just mentioned it is a day of contradiction you know um where we are thinking one way but we're sort of being a bit pharisaical, you know, not seeing how we are actually behaving in that manner ourselves. a very contradictory kind of energy. Um, the other thing that can come out of this is that we might observe people being very insincere, not saying what they really mean. Um, when something is opposite, it's polaric, there's trouble integrating the two. Mercury is to say something and Mars likes to say what it thinks. And because these two are opposite, it might be difficult to integrate the ability to say what you really mean. So people might be being untruthful, might not even realizing that they're kind of almost lying, not being honest to the feelings of their heart under this energy. So yeah, people might be quite insincere. Um, If you're very uh, receptive and sensitive, you're a bit of an empath, you'll probably know when people are being insincere. Oh, yes, I really, really love you. And you know deep down, come off it. You do not. And you just, you'll know, you know, if you, if you are a sensitive type person, you'll pick up on this and be able to see the truth at the core. But some people might struggle with observing insincerity or knowing when people are being insincere. They're not sort of receptive to that energy. So um, do, do keep that thought in mind that, you know, if, if you ask someone a question, the response you get may not be a sincere response in whatever realm you're talking about. So they are the energies of the week that are going to be most predominant. Of course, there are other energies as well. The moon's going to keep on moving and doing its thing wherever it is. Um, You know, we'll have other planetary connections being made and adjusting and changing. But the major ones that I talk about in my Astro Weather Reports are the ones we're going to notice the most that are going to be uh, most felt. So let's explore now for all signs what it means when we have the sun moving through the sign of Libra and how that affects us uh, on a personal level. So I want to talk about all signs and just to lay the premise for this, um, when I'm talking about all signs, it's advisable to check your primal triad. For those who are new to astrology, the primal triad is the sun, the moon and the rising sign. Wherever your ascendant falls, that's your rising sign. Uh, So if you check out all three of those, they they are actually the primal triad, the foundation for who we are, the most important components of everybody's chart. Um, And so it's advisable to check out all three. The rising sign, according to the system of astrology I have studied, is actually the most influential, and that's what I observe affecting me most deeply, most profoundly. But I, I do also notice that the moon placement Um, affects things uh, uh, quite strongly as well and then the sun is obviously very important it's the the planet we all circle around so it does have a great deal of importance too obviously now that I've set down that premise hopefully everybody listened to that so they know whether to look for their sun moon or rising sign (laughs) let's make a start I'm going to start with Sagittarius I'm going to give them the first go this week let's pop him up there Um, Sagittarius as the rising Uh, sign in whole sign astrology I'm I'm using well when we're looking at this I'll get my texter for a pointer my arms aren't quite long enough Um, but we've got the sun up here in Libra now for you Sagittarian people the sun rules the sign of Leo which is your ninth house so you're having a 30-day period of the ninth house Lord being in your 11th house for Sagittarian people this is a wealth yoga The sun is moving out now of having had its new moon phase in Virgo. For those who are patrons, you will have been able to get my new moon report about that. And we're moving into the sign of Libra, ninth house lord in the 11th. 
this is a wealth yoga. So this is a 30-day period where if you're Sagittarius rising sun or moon, you might get some prosperity come your way, some opportunity for some gainfulness, some opportunity to receive from the world under this influence. You can be very fortunate in your gains um, and particularly gains um, that are from... Uh, things that you have created, you know, uh, you know, your career, your uh, projects, your worldly achievements, that's where the lucrative um, results can come. Not so much stuff that you've received from investments or stuff that you've received from an inheritance or a will, but more stu uh, re receipt of acknowledgement, rewards and gains for things that you have um, established and that you have created. You might, under this 30-day influence, Sagittarius people also be very inclined to be involved in some sort of humanitarian work or uh, community growth project or uh, establishment of some um, like humanitarian cause. You might be very drawn to being involved in that under this influence of the ninth house lord in the 11th. If you work in a field where you are interacting with people from all over the world, there could be a significant gains that come to you this month as well from global interactions. Maybe you'll get more clients from over overseas or you might be able to export a product to a different country um, and so it, it's through those mechanisms that you might find gains can come for you as well. Under this influence you might increase your networks too or you might find that you are shining within a network that already exists in your life so you might be making new connections, establishing new friendships under this influence. It doesn't have to be on a big scale you might just you know find three new friends and they come into your life and it makes such a difference and you just enjoy this, this expansion of your networks, this, this glow in your networks that occurs um, with the sun moving through your 11th house. And finally, for you guys, there is the influence of the potential to receive something this month from spiritual practices as well, or, or beliefs, or some sort of higher knowledge that you've gained. Maybe you've been studying astrology for years, and you know you might get your first client now. Um, you might be able to, you know, utilize some sort of higher wisdom that you have spent years developing that can now bring you some sort of reward, some sort of gain. Maybe it's through your networks in your religious community that you can receive rewards now and gains and opportunities that come to you to enable you to fulfill your dreams. So this is a really great 30-day um, period personally for Sagittarian people because it's this beautiful wealth yoga and this yoga of opportunity. Uh, just for people who don't know, a yoga is a planetary combination of placements. And so, yeah, lucky Sagittarius. For Capricorn rising, sun or moon people, well, then we are having the sun move through the sign of Libra, which is your 10th house. But the sun happens to rule your 8th house. So in, in essence, what you're having is the 8th house Lord for 30 days moving through the 10th house. What does it mean to have the 8th house Lord in the 10th? Well, the energy of the 8th house is going to be present in your 10th house for about 30 days. There might be some transformations in Korea in store for you, some changes. Now, this can be for the good. Um, or it can be challenging and confronting. It really depends on what's going on in your own natal chart. But generally, you can expect change with career. Um, you know, maybe you have been working towards some sort of um, fame or notoriety or some sort of achievement in a certain career realm or a promotion or something like that. Um, and perhaps that might change what you want, what you expect from your career or the, the desire for fame. And you might think, oh, you know what? I don't actually really want to be famous. I just want to, you know, reach a lot of people or something like that. Um, so, you know, there might be a change in your expectations regarding career or an actual literal change and transformation in career you might you know have been going for a promotion uh, as head of a mining company or something and uh, instead of receiving that promotion to be head of a mining company you might suddenly get an opportunity to be um, head of a, a, a local council a CEO of a local council instead and you're like you know what that looks actually better I feel like I could make more of a difference to the world um, so a transformation of where you're heading as a CEO or an executive or a manager and you change course so transformations in career are what we can expect I want to also point out for you people that in the next 30 days for Capricorn people where you felt um, things were going to the juice, falling apart, not really working for you. You might suddenly get a shock 
and find everything starts to come together out of the blue. The things that you thought were going to the dogs actually turn out to be the best things that have ever happened to you. This is the kind of unexpected results we can get when we have the 8th house lord moving through the 10th. One word of warning though with this particular transit is that your um, 10th house is authority figures and when the sun is moving through this, this zone of your chart particularly, you might find that you encounter some authority figures that are a bit manipulative or jealous or controlling. So keep that in mind and act accordingly with peace, seek harmony where you can. We are in the sign of Libra after all, seek win-win situations, but just know you might encounter people who are a bit on the darker side uh, with uh, regard to their authority. They might be manipulating you or they might be coercing you or something like that. If you are a leader yourself, just know that you might come under attack in some way um, and be prepared for that. You know, I'm not into sugarcoating things. I like to tell you what you should be prepared for because to be forewarned is to be forearmed. If you are in a leadership position yourself, it, you might need to sort of be prepared that somebody might attack you or um, malign you in some way under this energy. And if you know that's coming, it can be like water off a duck's back. And you're just like, yeah, whatever. Leave those stupid comments on my YouTube channel. See if I care, you know. Um, you can be a bit more, um, yeah, a bit more grounded in how you deal with it when you know it's what's coming. And so now for Aquarius rising people, Let's have a look at what it means, or sun or moon people, I might add as well. Let's have a look at what it means. Is that straight there? Yes, it is. Good. Um, let's have a look at what it means to have the sun moving through Libra. Now, um, the, the sun and the moon have moved on from their uh, new moon experience in Virgo. I did a video all about that for my patrons, um, if you want to know about that. But now we're moving into new territory with the sun in the sign of Libra. And for anyone who is Aquarius rising, the sun is your seventh house lord. And for 30 days, your seventh house lord is going to be in the ninth house. What does this mean for you? What can you expect in the next 30 days? Well, you might find that some sort of luck and opportunity comes to you through a partnership in the next 30 days. Not because the sun is in Libra, but because the sun rules your seventh house of partnership and it's moving through the house of luck for 30 days. So if you're Aquarius rising, you might get very lucky and meet a partner um, or somebody, one of your, your partner that you, particularly a committed partnership, maybe a marriage or business partnership, um, can bring you greater prosperity, greater opportunity, greater good fortune. So that could mean, I'll, I'll give you an illustration, it could look like maybe an advertiser does a really fantastic campaign, campaign for you and, oh, that's just what you needed and it brings you more prosperity. Or maybe you're in a marriage partnership and because you're married to a certain person, uh, they might get an opportunity that comes to them uh, for, for a promotion or an inheritance or some sort of uh, chance that, that blesses their life and by association, by marriage with this person, your life is blessed and enhanced and made more abundant. So it's through a partnership of some description that you can receive more blessing. During the next 30 days you might find that a partner in life, a business partner, an associate, um, somebody, maybe a client even, uh, or a marriage partner can be bringing you um, a greater understanding of uh, some sort of belief. Uh, you might get a deeper spiritual insight in the next 30 days through that person. You might expand your horizons and understand things from a different point of view and a different perspective. You might become more philosophical because of something that a partner says to you or an experience that you have with a partner. In that sense, you might find one of your life partners, business partner, marriage partner, whatever, client, um, can actually be something of a guru to you, a teacher to you, an inspirational figure to you in the next 30 days. It's likely that they will be very benevolent towards you and very supportive of you as well, bring you a lot of blessing. So if you are an Aquarius rising person and you're in some sort of uh, partnership, just know it can be very beneficial for you now and really uphold you in the coming month. All right, if we are Pisces rising people or sun or moon, 
Um, we, but particularly rising, it's the strongest uh, representation. We will be looking at the sun moving through our eighth house. Now we're coming out of a period where we've had a new moon here in the sign of Virgo. I did a video all about that on my Patreon page and how it karmically affects us. It's particularly karmically strong for Pisces rising people or Virgo or Gemini or Sagittarius people. Check out that video if you want to know more about why. Um, but we're coming out of that and moving into new territory with the sun moving through the sign of Libra for the next 30 days and for Pisces rising people the sun is the ruler of the sixth house so you've got the sixth house ruler for 30 days sitting in the um, eighth house well this sounds like an interesting combination for those who are familiar with astrology you will know that both of these houses are considered to be malefic houses in the Hindu system what does it mean well you might be very relieved to know Pisces people that this is actually beneficial when we have the ruler of a uh, malefic house in a malefic house, it kind of negates the ill effects that we might expect with a malefic house or a malefically uh, a malefic planet ruler. What can happen is that there might be an alleviation of debt, of ill health, of unfortunate circumstances, an alleviation of conflict, an alleviation of um, uh, challenge or difficulty now this sounds really lovely actually and those who watch my videos regularly know that I'm a Pisces rising person so I'm like yay bring this on the eighth house is for things to be suddenly changed massive turns around 180 degree changes in direction so if you've been going through some sort of difficulty sixth house is um, health issues, um, daily routines that are challenging, um, work, if you've been working like a Trojan, just know there could be a massive transformation that comes to you in a beneficial way with this transit. The eighth house is regeneration, to be renovated, to be renewed, to be reborn. So you might be coming out of, say, a difficult work experience. You might be coming out of a, a bad health experience and you're reborn. So that could look like, I don't know, maybe it's, it's spring here in Australia and maybe all winter long you had colds and flus and you were just under the weather and, you know, you had cabin fever because you've been in lockdown and you've been depressed or what have you. Here comes the sun into Libra. You're reborn, you're rebirthed, you actually enter into the springtime of your soul. Your health improves, your outlook improves, your mental well-being improves um, when you have the transit of the sixth house lord through the eighth and you are reborn and regenerated. I want to point out that the transit of the sixth house lord through the eighth can also bring a crisis, but don't be afraid. <laughs> Any crisis that occurs in the next 30 days is actually going to be beneficial for you because this is the house of crisis. And remember, when the Lord of a Malefic house is in the Malefic house, it brings benefit and it, 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 um, it's, it wipes away the ill effects. It smashes and destroys. This is a house of destruction, destroys the ill effects. Bonus. So a crisis might occur and you're like nail biting what's going to happen lo and behold what happens is that you're born into the springtime the blossoms appear benefit comes and inheritance is received you know eight houses inheritances um some sort of benevolence occurs and happens for you it's actually a very blessed transit so after the crisis after the destruction of something that you actually didn't need in your life and was not serving you comes the blessing comes the rebuilding comes the regeneration now, I will also point out that the eighth house is the house of the partner's resources. So it is possible that some sort of difficulty can occur, um, crisis or transformation might occur with your partner's resources, if, that, if you're in a situation where you have a partner. Um, and that might be, uh, that might occur, but just know that because they are in association with you, maybe that debt can be transformed or they're, they're you know maybe they're having difficulty receiving the inheritance or the will that was left to them or um you know trying to finalize some sort of court situation or something because they are with you that can be transformed into something beneficial so you know you might um lose out on receiving i don't know grandma's 
great art collection in the will, um, your partner might lose that only to find that he gains grandpa's classic car collection instead, which is far more valuable or something. You know, there can be a transformation of partners' resources and what they experience because they are connected with you. You carry the energy of transformation this month, not all the time, but this month, you carry the energy of transformation with regard to partners' resources. So it, it's going to be for the best because this is a, a good combination. All right, enough for Pisces. Let's check out Aries. Aries rising, most of all, but also sun or moon. My little crooked arrow there. Um, we have had the new moon occurring here in the sign of Virgo. I did a big um, new moon report all about that. Uh, on my Patreon page for anyone who's interested, but now we're moving out of that energy um, as the sun moves into Libra and it's going to stay there for the next 30 days. Check out the intro to this video if you want to know what days um, to expect this to occur on. But the sun is moving through Libra and for Aries rising people, the sun happens to rule the fifth house, one of the lucky houses in the horoscope, and the sun is spending as the fifth house ruler 30 days in the seventh. What does this mean for you? Well, good fortune, which is a fifth house thing, can come to you through partnerships for the next 30 days. So look to collaborate with someone, look to create win-win situations. Not always at the forefront of an Aryan person's mind, but the more you look to create win-win situations, to create partnerships, to create connections in your life, the more blessing is going to come to you. Remember, this is a fortunate house. It's a house of fortune. It's the, it's the second luckiest house. Luck and fortune can come to you through collaborations this month. I've got to say, if you are a politician and you are experiencing this transit, great for you because you're going to be able to negotiate and reach diplomatic agreements that might not otherwise um, be able to manifest for you under this energy. It's very, very helpful. You'll have sort of a transiting capacity to do really good agreements and contracts and negotiations. I want to also point out that the fifth house is romance and the fifth house lord for a month is going to be in the house of commitment. It's entirely possible that you might get engaged. Some people will depend on what your chart is showing natally, but for some people that can be a thing. You might get engaged. You might be able to bring love into your committed relationships in some way. You might experience more romance with your partner this month. You might experience uh, some, you know, more opportunities to date and to have fun and experience pleasure with your partner this month if you are blessed enough to have a partner. You might also, uh, you know, experience some prosperity and fortune with business partnerships, you know, so not only finding someone to collaborate with and create an, a deal with or what have you that could bring you prosperity, but if you've got an existing partnership in business, that person can bring a lot of blessing and love, sorry, not love, blessing and financial fortune into your life. The fifth house is also fame. And you might find it's through a partner that you can experience fame this month in some way. You know, uh, maybe you're in a marriage and um, your partner does something truly wonderful and heroic and amazing and they get on the news and you're standing there next to them in this news interview. You're standing there next to them while they tell about their heroic deed that they did and all your family sees you on the news and um, with your partner being interviewed, you know, that kind of thing where you have your 15 minutes of fame through a partner, um, that could occur for you. Fifth house is also highly creative. It's the house of creative intelligence. And so you might be doing something creative with a partner this month. You might be doing some sort of hobby with a partner. Uh, maybe, you know, and it doesn't have to be a marriage partner. Maybe you're a wonderful artist and you love to create beautiful works of art and someone approaches you and says, hey, you know what? Um, let's do an exhibition together. I've got this beautiful art space that I've booked and um, I just, I haven't got enough art to fill it out. And I want to sort of make sure there's plenty of substance in this exhibition that I'm doing, let's collaborate. And, and so you do some sort of creative endeavor, such as hosting an art exhibition, or um, maybe you might do some sort of, I don't know, whatever is creative to you, um, like a singing 
competition or some sort of performance activity with a partner that um, gives you the chance to be creative and express your creative intelligence with somebody else this month. So if we are Taurus rising or sun or moon, you know, you can use all three, um, but rising will tend to be the most strongly represented. We are seeing the sun in the sign of Libra, which happens to be your sixth house. Now, I want to point out for Taurus rising people, um, you've just had a very blessed new moon falling in your fifth house of good karma. And I spoke about this in my report on my Patreon page, all about this very karmic new moon. Um, but we're moving on from this now and, and moving into the house of how we can absolve our difficult karma, which is a sixth house theme. And so the sun is moving through here for the next 30 days. The sun happens to rule your fourth house. Yes, get it right. Fourth house. And it's in the sixth house. What does it mean to have the fourth house lord in the sixth house by transit? Well, it's not an easy placement because this is a malefic house, the sixth house. It's a challenging house, but you've got what it takes to deal with it. Because in ancient astrology, the sun is um, considered to be one of the malefic planets. And so to have a malefic planet in a malefic house gives you the strength to deal with whatever you need to deal with. You might be very focused on balancing your emotions this month and you'll need to do so through having a good routine, through eating well, through exercising regularly, through getting some you know, good sleep. Make sure you focus on your routine and your health and your well-being this month. It, it's essential for you to keep your emotions balanced. Fourth house is emotions sitting in uh, for the month in the sixth house of needing to fix problems. So there might have been a problem with your diet, with your exercise, with your sleep patterns, and you might need to actually um, establish some sort of uh, routine there to help support your emotional well-being. This could be a month when you experience as a Taurus rising person the delight because it's not all bad. I'm not I'm not saying that the the the, um, the higher manifestation of the sixth house and the fourth house lord in the sixth might be that you, you want to cook your own food, grow your own veggies, and make gourmet meals with food that you produce yourself. Fourth house is to garden. Third house is to cook something. So that can be happening for you. But do keep in mind that you might receive some sort of uh, criticism from fourth house people such as your parents or the mother figure or the maternal line in some way or your family you know your immediate family might be critical of you this month in some manner and for to be forewarned is to be forearmed you'll be able to take it you know in your stride and treat it like you know water off a duck's back if you do receive some criticism you might be perfecting something to do with your home this month. You might be working on some renovating. In fact, you might be doing a lot of work around the home this month. Uh, you might be you know, working on your garden, working on painting something, renovating something, making something look better and um, have a, a greater aesthetic appeal uh, in your home and domestic environment this month. For Taurus rising people, I also want to say, if you're thinking about getting a loan for something, I try and put it off until the sun moves out of Libra, to be honest, because it's not an easy placement to establish loans or not an easy energy to establish loans under. There could be some challenges and some difficulties and it could end this getting a loan now for the next 30 days might cause you to end up feeling enslaved by this loan. Um, so do avoid that. If you are a landlord and a property owner, know that under this energy, there might be some challenges with your tenants this month. Um, there might be some difficulties with people who are renting properties or if you're in, into hospitality and you have a few Airbnb apartments or something, you might find it a bit, a bit difficult. There might be some, some issues, some challenges that come up. Um, yeah, do be careful of that and work with it accordingly when they do just know don't get all head up and angry and frustrated just know aha uh -huh, this is the energy of the time it will end it's just a cycle i'm gonna just work through it keep putting one foot in front of the other and and get through that that uh that energy 
How can you work best with this energy? Well, I'd encourage you, as I said, to fix up your home, renovate your home, restore um, your home in some way, or focus on those sorts of projects. Focus because we're in the sign of Libra here on beautifying your home environment, maybe through some sort of new, like new wallpaper or a new rug or something. Um, maybe you want to sew some cushions that are, you know, brighten things up do things to perfect your home environment and focus your attention there and that can actually be very helpful for you um, to navigate this energy also for Taurus people just to conclude this little bit for them um, if you are having issues with family at all um, it's a good month to look to resolve things to um, heal things to restore things so you might do that by reaching out and connecting or by writing a letter to somebody or um, you know offering some sort of service to a family member who there's been some tension with and some difficulty with um, in doing that it's a, it can be potentially a good month to heal some rifts that might be present all right if we are Gemini Gemini rising or sun or moon, but you know, rising is generally felt the strongest. Um, this energy of the sun is falling most blessedly, guys, in your fifth house, which is a very benevolent house, a very lucky house. So this could be quite helpful for you. Let's, let's explore and find out more. Um, we're moving out of what was a very karmic new moon for Gemini people, falling in the fourth house of our foundations very karmic for you guys and I did a big video about this on my Patreon page if you want to know more about that it's still in play for the next uh, the next two weeks actually but we're moving out now of this new moon energy in Virgo and into the sun in the sign of Libra well this is the third house lord the sun I'll just get my pointer right there the sun rules the sign of Libra Libra <laughs> Libra for any Gemini people the sun rules Leo, your third house in whole sign astrology, and it's transiting through the fifth house. What does this mean? Well, it's actually a really blessed combination to be experiencing for the next 30 days. There might You might find that there's going to be a lot of talking and communicating, maybe some writing, some speaking opportunities that present themselves for you in the next 30 days. And if that's the case, then you're going to be writing, speaking, communicating about fifth house things love romance dating creative intelligence children so you might find that you you know you decide to start a blog under this influence um, that writes about you know my experience on 50 dates or something 50 dates uh, the breakdown and you do a whole you know <laughs> blog or something like that or um, you know maybe a YouTube channel about my 50 dates you know you analyze 50 dates that you go on or something <laughs> just a silly idea you might find that you get a chance to teach something to instruct someone in something um, particularly younger children teenage children that might affect that might come for you um, an opportunity of that nature this month you might find that you're really drawn to pursuing your hobbies that require the use of the hands you might be jewelry making um, you might be doing some sort of leather work you might be doing some sort of sewing or artistry or braided rug making or just anything um, that requires the use of your hands and the creative expression um, that uh, we're combining the third house here which is use of the hands talents and abilities with creativity and creative expression and hobbies so that might take a very uh, strong place for you this month at the forefront uh, it might be at the forefront of your mind and your activities this month and you'll get a lot of joy out of it this is the house of joy the house of delight the house of where our heart is and so it's through these hobbies that you might find there's a sense of joy this month now if you are feeling mentally stuck at all um, this month this 30-day period then I'd encourage you um, to uh, communicate to talk out your ideas with somebody um, share your feelings with somebody with a friend a partner um, you know journal brainstorm in a group read something go on a walk if you're feeling stuck with your creativity and your creative expression any of those endeavors are going to help alleviate any stuckness for you this month if you are a Gemini person and you're looking for a bit of love in your life, then this energy might come to you quite potentially through a friend or through a sibling who might introduce you 
to somebody who you're like, hey, 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 you know. So that that can actually occur. Not that not that the sun for you, um, Gemini rising people, rules anything to do with love and romance, but the sun is in the domain of love and romance. So it could be just a fleeting, you know, two week thing, two week date experience that you have and you have a lot of fun and it's really great and really enjoyable but it's an introduction that's made through maybe a sibling or maybe a friend or some social group where you meet this person and it's just a wonderful interlude of fun and joy the lord of the third house of small business is going into the house of creativity so don't be surprised Gemini people, if you get some creative inspiration for a small business or for a project you can utilize in your small business or for an advertising campaign or a marketing campaign or some sort of administrative work, you might get some creative aha light bulb moment that comes your way this month that you can really work with. Quite frankly, it's also a month where you might enjoy playing some games that have to do with, you know, your creative expression. You might sort of decide, oh, you know, kids, we're in lockdown. <laughs> Let's m make it as fun as we can. Let's get out the Pictionary. Creative expression meets the Lord of game playing. And so you might do some creative game playing um, this month with your children as well under this influence. So uh, cancer rising people, well, what is going on in the sky for you this week? Well, cancer rising or sun or moon, but rising is generally felt the strongest. We are seeing this month um, some very interesting action in your fourth house. We're coming out of a, a really strong karmic new moon that occurred in the sign of Virgo um, in the past week and I did a video all about how that was affecting each sign available on my patreon page it's in action for about two weeks in fact it's in action for the next six months so if you want to know what's going on for you in the next six months do check that video out but um, we're moving out of the energy of Virgo with the new moon which is where it was all focused last week into the energy of Libra which is um, the Sun's sign for the next 30 days what does this mean for you? Well, the sun in your chart, Cancer people, happens to rule your second house. The sun rules the sign of Leo. And so essentially you have the second house lord transiting through the fourth house. This is a very, very important transit. For this 30-day period that the sun is in the sign of Libra, you might be uh, drawn to sort of emphasize the fourth house things, which is... Uh, home, domestic environment, land, property, garden. So you might actually be spending some money in this realm because the second house is our resources and our money and our finances and you might be spending money on your home this month. Doing things up, fixing up the garden, getting things ready for maybe you want to sell your home in the future and you're like, oh, I'm just going to paint this or um, fix that squeaky door or whatever. You might be spending some money on your home this month. I'd also say that this month generally, particularly the early part of this 30 day period, not the latter part so much, but the earlier part could be very beneficial for investing in some sort of real estate, you know, buying an Airbnb apartment or something like that could be very um, helpful for you. If you've been thinking about doing that, this energy could prove supportive for that. This is a month where you might also find that the maternal line of your family is somehow connected to your um, resources. So you might receive an opportunity to grow your resources through your family. You might get the chance to work in some sort of money-making scheme or venture with your family this month. That can manifest under this energy. It might also be a good month to look at investing in mining or anything that is earth related, organic food, uh, farming, agriculture. These might be some really good places to invest money, like I said, particularly in the beginning of this 30 day period. So around the 23rd to say the yeah 23rd of September through to the end of September, basically. You might need to loan some money to um, a maternal figure, to your mother. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but just cross your T's and dot your I's if that's what you're looking at doing, if you need to sort of support your mother um, or a maternal figure in some way financially. You can even make money this month through something that you do from your home. Uh, as I mentioned, this the fourth house has to do with gardening, so you, you know, you might grow some cuttings and have you know a heap of lavender plants and you have a market stall you know with these plants you've grown at home 
and they may bring you in some extra income and some extra money. So something that you do in the home with in the home environment or with a garden or you know selling your zucchinis or whatever that you've grown at home. Um, something that you do from home at home can bring you some money this month too. You might also find that if you are into vehicles, this is a good month to sort of make money from vehicles as well, you know, buying or selling parts, car parts or something, or selling a vehicle and buying a new vehicle. That could happen for you this month for some people. Um, also, I just want to just give you guys, you cancer strong people, a heads up. Um, watch out for comfort eating this month. This is the area of the chart where we feel safe, where we feel secure and where we establish our safety and security. And the Lord of Food in your chart, the sun, is moving through the fourth house of safety and security. So, uh, you know, you might find that that chocolate has extra appeal this month or you're constantly buying fish and chips or something um, and just to sort of make you feel a bit safer, a bit more secure, a bit more comfortable in life, you know. Watch out for comfort eating um, under this energy for the next 30 days. So if you happen to be a Leo rising or sun or moon person, well, this energy is falling for you guys down here in your third house. And this is where a lot of the focus is going to be for the next 30 days for you. Now, we're coming out of this very karmic new moon that was experienced in your second house of money and making money and resources. Um, I did a big video all about that on my Patreon page. Uh, it's in play for the next two weeks to six months for some people, um, that energy of the new moon. But we're moving out of that now and into the sign of Libra where the sun is going to be for the next 30 days. And so we're going to experience... Um, a strong third house emphasis for you guys in the next 30 days. But the sun for a Leo person rules your first house. It rules you, how you shine in the world, how you show up in the world. It's all about you. The sun is your ruling planet. So it's very important wherever the sun goes. So for the next 30 days, the sun is going to be emphasizing the third house realm of your chart. Well, what does this mean for you? You're actually really blessed this month, Leo people, because the emphasis is um, on self-made wealth this month. In fact, to have the first house lord in the third, in the natal chart is a yoga for self-made wealth, for people who make money through their own skills and abilities. So this is a transiting influence of that on your life. You have the capacity this month for the next 30 days to make money from your own skills and abilities. Communicating is going to be very important for you this month. You might get the opportunity to write, to speak, to teach something, to instruct others. You might get the opportunity to learn some new skill or ability or purchase some new piece of uh, equipment, you know, technological equipment that really brings some blessing to your journey through life. You might get the chance to be a leader in some way. This is a, a position that can bring a lot of leadership opportunities to us. I wouldn't be at all surprised, Leo strong people, if there is a chance for you to learn a lot of new things, not anything in depth, but a lot of different things. You might be able to study numerology, do a past life regression course, uh, do some sort of mediumship training. Maybe you, you get to uh, do a, a two hour astrology workshop or something, and you just get a lot of experience and opportunities in many different areas that can manifest for you for the next 30 days as well. So expect that your skills are going to increase under this influence. Expect that the opportunity to make money from your skills and talents is going to really skyrocket under this influence for the next 30 days. If you work with this energy, if I mean, it's no point sitting on the couch watching Netflix for 30 days and expecting to see things happen. You will actually need to take action. The first house is the action taking house, you know, where the initiation to establish something, to start something, you need to move the energy when the sun, the first house lord, is in the third house of movement. So get going. Don't sit there on the couch twiddling your thumbs. I have also mentioned just on that topic that we it's not a good idea to start something new under Mars retrograde energy. But if it's something that you like, um, for me, I've been working on my astrology business for a number of years now. So so if I get going on a project that's been in the back of my mind for six months, it's not going to be starting something new. It's just going to be getting the momentum going in that area that I've been thinking about for a while. So keep that in mind. That's how this works. For you Leo people, 
this is the ruler of the body. The ruler of the first house is the ruler of your body and your bodily experience in life. Going into the third house, I would encourage you if you're a Leo person to move more this month, to get out and go walking, to take a bike ride, to go for a swim, to go for a drive in the country or, uh, you know, if you can manage it, drive somewhere. <clears throat> um, get some movement into your life. And if you can't leave the house for whatever reason, then do some aerobics at home, do some yoga at home, move your body this month and you will really reap the benefits physically. Um, it's actually quite essential. All right, well, if we happen to be Virgo rising people, then this energy is falling for us in our second house. That's where the sun is transiting for the next 30 days. Now, Virgo rising people have had a very karmic new moon just occur in their first house in whole sign astrology. And I've done a, a video all about this very karmic new moon that's gonna be in play, uh, particularly for the next two weeks and for many people, especially you guys, for the next six months. So check that out on my Patreon page to find out more about how that's going to affect you if you haven't already. But we are having um, a movement out of your sign now, Virgo rising people, and the sun is moving into Libra for the next 30 days, which is your second house. I want to just encourage you, if you are Virgo rising, to be very careful with your money this month. Be careful how you're spending it, where you're directing it. Keep an eye on your wallet when you go out because the 12th house Lord, the sun which rules your 12th house is sitting in the house of your resources and your money. And the 12th house is to lose something at its lower manifestation level. So some people may not be experiencing the lower manifestation, they'll be experiencing the higher. I'm gonna talk about both. But you might find that you're deceived in some way or you lose money in some way um, regarding resources and purchases and things like that. So, so just be extra vigilant for the next 30 days. In the positive sense, for you guys, for Virgo rising people, you might not be aware that this is happening, but it is entirely possible this month that an ancestor who has passed, our, somebody from our lineage from the, you know, who's deceased, 12th house is our past lives or someone we've known in past lives or an ancestor who is in the spirit realm, could be leading you and guiding you and directing you with regard to money and finances. So while we need to be vigilant and careful about how we're spending and about where we put our wallet down and all that sort of thing, at the same time, listen to your intuition. Trust your intuition. In fact, look for the, those goosebump moments regarding where to invest money, where to place your money. That is likely to be more influential in the earlier part of this 30-day period, not the latter when we start having, as I said in the intro, those squares and oppositions that will be affecting things. But say from 23rd of September through to sort of like the 30th of September, um, you might be getting some guidance from the divine about monetary uh, investments. In fact, during that time, it might be a good idea to look at investing in 12th house things. You might like to look at uh, perhaps investing in some sort of spiritual work or investing in uh, some creative endeavor. You might like to back a film or um, you know, uh, invest in some sort of creative, like supporting somebody on Patreon would be a perfect example. Some creative person on Patreon and you can get behind them and support and invest in their work and what they're producing and be one of their, their supporters. Um, it might also be a good time to, to look at uh, being involved in the arts and getting a sense of worth and value from your involvement in some sort of creative endeavor, in some sort of artistic endeavor as well. I'd encourage you this month, Virgo people, to look beyond the material. Now, um, Virgo people are very focused on the practical. And that's a beautiful characteristic that uh, people with Virgo strong placements have. But I'd encourage you this month to look beyond the practical. Start looking to um, looking for valuable components of your life that occur in the spiritual, in the divine, in the heavenly, in the mystical, in the shamanic, in the you know in spiritual realms. 
if you place your values this month because the second house is values if you place your values into those things this month you will receive the rewards and gains not the material rewards and gains so much but the heart-centered rewards and gains the peace of mind the lack of anxiety the lack of worry the lack of fear by focusing your values this month on spiritual things and it's when we do this that we can see miraculous things happen this month in um, financial realms for us because our our energy is working at the highest manifestation of what is playing out the 12th house is miracles and for a month for 30 days you're going to have the influence of miracles in the house of resources and money but that only arrives when we lift our gaze high when we lift our vibration to the highest level when we communicate with the divine and when we seek our higher self I'd also encourage you to use your voice this month as well. Sing, particularly sing, make music with your voice. Now that doesn't matter if it's just singing in the shower or, you know, you're digging away in the garden and you're humming to yourself or something, but sing because the, the energy of um, music that is divinely inspired, the energy of um, divine music is going into the house of the voice. You'll uplift your soul and raise your vibration by simply singing. Easy, what a lovely thing to do. Another of the manifestations for the next 30 days you might experience is a sort of a detachment from material things uh, and, and that is exactly what we're talking about that, that's actually what needs to happen it's not like the, the practical realms of life are not vital they are but um, of more importance for you this month is the spiritual side of your value system and you might be directed towards that and sort of losing attachment to um, the physical realm you might find that you decide you're going to you know, donate all your books from your bookshelf to charity because you haven't read them in 10 years. Or you might find that you, you've just got too many rugs in your house. So, you know, you go and um, sell one on Facebook, buy, swap and sell or something like that. And you just lose attachment to material, physical things that actually you don't need anymore. So it can be very beneficial to sort of clear out and declutter the life in a sense as well. Okay, for Libra rising people, well, it's all the action happening in your sign from now on <laughs> this week and in the weeks ahead for the next 30 days. The sun is moving through your sign if you're Libra rising or sun or moon. Well, uh, we are moving out of an intensely karmic new moon that occurred in your 12th house of past lives. Now, I spoke in, uh, extensively about this in my new moon video on Patreon for my Patreon followers if you want to know more about how that's affecting you for the next six months. But now the sun has moved on from Virgo and has moved into the first house for you all about the self. How is this going to affect you? Well, you're going to experience what it is like to have this beautiful combination um, of the 11th house Lord in the first for a month. The 11th house lord, the, the, sun, the 11th house in whole sign astrology is Leo up here and the sun is the ruler of Leo. And for a whole month, the 11th house lord is going to be in your first house. This means it could be a month where you're really focused on networking, um, sharing with other people, uh, creating friendships and connecting, which is something Libra really loves. It's a month of establishing goals and dreams and visions for the future and what you could achieve and bringing them to the manifested reality of your bodily experience. Very exciting times. In fact, this is actually a wealth combination when we have it in the natal chart. So for the period of a month, you might be experiencing a, a boost in opportunities, a boost in resources, a boost in the, the chance to gain and receive. We have this above average ability for 30 days if we are Libra people to really manifest something wonderful in our life materially, but also um, in, in terms of our networks and our connections and to maybe receive some accolades, to receive some notoriety, to, re to receive a reward or, uh, you know, some sort of um, title or something like that. If you're Libra, sun, moon or rising, you can expect to be very busy as well for the next 30 day period while this 
sun is moving through your sign. Um, it's going to be particularly busy in a beneficial way in the earlier part of the month, sort of from the 23rd of September uh, through, when I say earlier part of the month, the earlier part of this 30-day period of the sun moving through Libra. Um, so, you know, uh, from sort of the 23rd of September through to the 30th of September, that's when you might be very, very busy getting your goal on and seeing the results, seeing the rewards. In the latter part of this month, it could get very difficult for Libra and people because of um, the aspects that are being made, which I talked about in the intro to this video. However, you are blessed. Uh, it's, it's all looking hairy <laughs> um, with the the, the um, transits and, and aspects that are happening in the latter part of the sun sojourn through Libra. But you are blessed, Libra people, because you have a uh, one of the wealth houses for prosperity and and it's a, it's a very blessed house the 11th house a very auspicious house being in the lord of the 11th house being in your first house that will get you through the difficulties the challenges of this birthing period yay there can be as i said recognition for the work you've done and there can be a rise in popularity that comes for you under this influence too it's a time when you might be reflecting the needs of society um, let's, I'll use myself as an example, you know, I speak each week about what's going on in the astrology of, of the time. And some weeks I get really low views on my YouTube channel and some weeks I get really high views on my YouTube channel. Now, if this was you as a Libran person, what would happen this month is that you would get very high views for your YouTube channel and popularity and visibility because of the capacity to be reflecting what society wants to hear right now. Oh, she's talking about this this event or this movement or this aspect and oh, I really want to know about that. So the popularity comes through being a reflector of what society needs and wants. Now, you won't be consciously doing this. Oh, what does society need or want that I can give right now? It will automatically generate for you over the next 30 days. You will know what society needs to hear. You will know what product society needs to receive. The energy of the 11th house is progressive and visionary. It's seeing trends before they arrive. And so when the 11th house Lord is moving through the first house, it gives you personally the ability to know this intuitively and uh, to make the most of it too. You might find that this is a really good month for joining groups or participating in group activities or um, protest marches or humanitarian sort of activism. Uh, things like that can be very, uh, you know, you'll be drawn to those things this month. You'll be very activated in you this month. Whereas, you know, maybe the rest of the year you couldn't care less. But this month it's going to be very predominant for you and you'll be actually um, maybe get the opportunity to participate in those things or be drawn to those sorts of things in some way. In fact, community, friendships, um, and community work can be a big draw for you as well. So um, working with your friends and, and sharing time with your friends, yes, very, very important. But you might also be building towards something, creating something. The, the sun is to create, and you might be creating um, some new vision for a utopian society or you know breaking away from the old traditions this month and establishing maybe a kibbutz or a community or a commune or a hippie society and i wish there was another word um, if anybody knows of another word for a hippie society um, i'd appreciate it because hippie has all these sorts of connotations that aren't you know so positive but um, i love the idea personally of um, a community of like-minded people who want to live organically and holistically and with um, bartering systems and uh, and sort of su supportive foundation for one another trading and selling within the the, the group so if there's a, a collective term for those kinds of societies or communities please let me know because I'm having trouble thinking of one I keep using the term hippie but it doesn't have good connections anyhow those kinds of societies might be having a very big draw for you right now. You might be looking into them, researching them. You might be looking to instigate something like that because the first house is to start something and the 11th house rules communities like that grassroots, bottom-up direction um, for community that might be being present in your life right now and you're looking into those sorts of things, which sounds like fun to me. All right last sign for the week and thank you so much for being patient scorpio rising scorpio sun scorpio moon people 
I really appreciate it. Now, for you guys, this is um, this is a very interesting energy that's playing out for you. You are having the sun move through Libra, which is your 12th house. We've just come out of a new moon that occurred in the sign of Virgo, and this is a very karmic new moon. Now, I, I spoke in extensively about this in my Patreon video uh, for all my Patreons um, and what it would mean for each sign. But we're leaving the energy of Virgo now the sun is moving out of Virgo the moon's already gone out of there um, but that doesn't mean that 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 new moon energy doesn't apply it will apply for for two weeks until the full moon and it will also apply for a lot of people until uh, the next six months when we have a full moon in the sign of Virgo instead of a new moon in the sign of Virgo but as I said I talk about that in my video now the sun's energy is in the 12th house and this is going to be the case for the next 30 days from the 23rd roughly depending on where you are in the world from the 23rd of September so there's going to be a strong emphasis of Sun in the 12th house and it's a very karmic house it's a very uh, strong house for past life connections for you Scorpio people in this case so what does it mean well the Sun happens to rule your 10th house it rules the sign of Leo and it's going into the 12th house what does it mean to have the, the 10th house Lord in the 12th house this is a month where you might find your reputation becomes more oriented towards spirituality people might start to see you as a spiritual person people might start to um, recognize you as a very spiritual spiritually minded or even a creative type of person because the energy of reputation the Sun is going into the house of spirituality and creativity you might even begin some sort of legacy uh, that you hope to leave people which is a 10th house thing to leave a legacy but it's a spiritual legacy it's a spiritual um, kind of a something substance that you want to pass on to the generations who come after you this is a month where you might be establishing some sort of creative legacy as well now if you work in a creative field it could look like you working uh, like, let's say you work in the film industry and you begin a film project that you don't know right now but in the long term is going to be a legacy uh, of your great creative filmmaker prowess um, that can occur uh, under this 30-day influence of the Sun in the 12th house as well for this 30-day period Scorpio people you might find that anything that is structured in your life anything that is hierarchical in your life personally might start to dissolve a bit that doesn't mean it's going to be done away with completely or that you're going to lose it entirely but you might find that things start to dismantle uh, maybe you, you are part of a very hierarchical family and maybe something occurs in the family that causes that hierarchical nature to sort of be dissolved and people suddenly take on a more equal footing in the nature of your family one example but something that's hierarchical in your life might start to give way now authorities and bosses might sort of take a back seat for example you might your boss might go on a holiday under this influence an authority figure might suddenly disappear from your life maybe you've been having troubles with the police or something like that for whatever reason who knows um, and, and suddenly they're no longer knocking on your door all the time or harassing you <laughs> I, I, I do like police don't get me wrong like some of them have very good hearts and have the right motivation so I'm not trying to pick on someone but I'm using the term authority figure might suddenly disappear out of your life or be removed from your life it's also the energy of the father the 10th house Lord and the Sun has to do with father figures as well so for Scorpio rising people it might mean that your father goes on a holiday or your father goes to an ashram or a, a resort or some sort of holiday retreat or your father might worst case scenario might need to go to hospital for some reason under this influence for the next month it could also look like your the authority figures the father figures the bosses in your life might become very spiritual all of a sudden might suddenly discover uh, Buddhism or um, you know yoga practice or something and it transforms their life so you might find that effect happening in your um, the, the life of authority figures and father figures and bosses as well it is a month a 30-day period where you might actually start considering new career opportunities that have to do with something spiritual or something creative maybe you might decide that you actually want more of a career working in a day spa working in a resort 
Uh, you might decide that you want to um, get an executive position on the board of, uh, you know, Club Med or something like that, you know. Um, those sorts of eventualities are not entirely impossible under this influence. You could also find for the next 30 days that you are required to pursue your career in some sort of isolated place. So that might mean working from home for some people. It might mean that you are required to go overseas for your career for the next 30 days, to live out of a suitcase and go to a foreign land in some way, to go across the oceans. Or you might even have to go um, to a beachside city or a, an oceanside city for work or a, a town or something for work. And you might have to spend some time near the ocean for work in some way under this influence as well. So we're seeing the meeting of the 10th house influence connecting with 12th house things for the next 30 days. You could also find that um, ancestors and your past life experiences have an influence now on your career success in some way. And you might not be aware that this is happening, but it is entirely possible. It's possible that there could be some karmic fruit that affects the, the success or not uh, of your career trajectory. So that is what we're seeing in the skies this week with regard to the sun moving through the sign of Libra. Thank you for joining me for this Astro Weather Report. I'll have another one for you next week, but let's conclude now with a prayer. Energy of love in the universe, we thank you for the potential blessings of this month and we ask for strength to navigate with perseverance and endurance uh, the difficulties and challenges that this month may hold as well. Thank you for those who watch over everything that happens on earth and who are holding space for love and beauty and righteousness and kindness and benevolence to prevail. And we pray that it does. Um, we, we seek to lift our vibration and I pray for every follower of my YouTube channel um, to be blessed, to be uplifted and to find a space of joy in the month ahead particularly in the next week under this astro weather. Thank you. And so it is. Well, thanks for joining me, as I said, and I'll catch you next week with next week's astro weather report.